Welcome back to Culture Corner Review for culture news, reviews, and everything in between. Let's get it. Meg's hairstylist, EJ, testified. Let me catch you up on what went on with him. It was a very, very interesting testimony from him. First of all, I'm six foot four. This guy's like six foot five. Huge presence, heels. He's like clicking, stomping through the courtroom. He had beautiful flowing hair down to like his belly button, bright pink suit on, amazing presence. And then the scene that he walked into. So we had lunch and then we come back from lunch and like 30, 45 minutes goes by. The judge isn't there. The lawyers aren't there. Everybody's very confused what's going on. Well, what's going on is nobody had ever heard what EJ had to say before. And so the lawyers and the judge were in the back going over with EJ to make sure his testimony is appropriate to present to the jury. Now, when he comes out, the defense attorney presents him as their witness. He's the defense's first witness. The defense attorney explains to the jury that nobody has ever spoken to him. The police have never interviewed him. No one knows what he's gonna say. There was a moment where the question is asked to EJ, hey, at some point in the night, did something happen to Meg that gave you concern? And EJ lets out a big sigh and he's like, Yes, and we were on the edge of our seat, like, what is he about to say? Then he's like, her wig started slipping. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, her wig started slipping. I went to her, I was like, yeah, we gotta fix this wig. We tried to fix it, and then it started slipping some more. We went to the bathroom, and the bathroom, we realized this wig cannot be fixed, and we were ready to go. The rest of his testimony, let me take you what he went first off. Amazing witness, great presence, believe everything he said. I'd said that about Kelsey in the morning. By the afternoon, nobody believed anything Kelsey said. The whole day, EJ testified. The whole day, everybody believed what everything EJ said, if you ask me. So, EJ testified. They get there. <clears throat> they check into their room. Kelsey goes, starts playing Pong. Meg changes, comes down. She's playing Pong. Everybody starts drinking. Defense attorney, hey, how much did they drink? He's like, a lot. Like, how much? And he's like, well, EJ... I remember at some point thinking to myself, damn, that's a lot of bottles these people have gone through. And the defense attorney established that there was about six to eight people there who had drank almost six to seven bottles, according to EJ. On cross, the cross-examination, the prosecutor came out and he's like, well, how many people were there? And were some of them, wasn't Odell Beckham Jr. there? He's a big guy. And EJ was like, nah, oh, BJ wasn't drinking. And so it kind of killed the prosecutor's point. Look, EJ established they're very drunk. The other big point that EJ established, he said that Kelsey packed her own bag. He said that he had seen previously in Meg's luggage and her items, things for personal protection like mace, a taser, and what looked like a handgun. He didn't see it that night, or he doesn't recall whether he saw it that night, but before he had seen it. He established that Kelsey packed her own bag and that he moved Kelsey's bag from his car to the trunk of Tori's car. And then the defense established that if you look at where the bag is, Kelsey's bag, when the police pulled over the car, the bag is not in the trunk anymore. The bag has been moved from the trunk from the third, over the third row, and it's now in the middle of the bench seat. So, question, did somebody move that bag? Did the gun come out of the bag? That's where the defense is going with this. The rest of EJ's testimony, he basically said that, you know, there was this issue with Tori and Kylie, and it eventually gets Meg to be irritated, not acting like herself. He also explained that Corey Gamble was there, suggesting that, yo, it's time to go, and that's when he felt a little uncomfortable, like, yo, we need to get going. There was a laugh out loud moment in the courtroom when he was like, the defense was like, yo, why did you feel like you needed to go? He's like, yo, I don't wanna, you know, I felt like I, like we were the black people and we were the last people there, and so I didn't want to be the last black people there. The whole courtroom laughed, I laughed. EJ was, like I said, just a tremendous witness. And the rest of the testimony, I mean, it was just tit for tat. The defense would bring something up, the prosecution would bring something up. So like, you know, the prosecution's like, oh, did, did you see Kelsey with a gun in her bikini bottoms? And EJ was like, no. <laughs> so the defense attorney would go up and be like, yo, did you see Tori with a gun in his swimming trunks? And EJ was like, he wasn't wearing swimming trunks, he was wearing drawers. <laughs> and the defense attorney's like, he was wearing what? He's like, he was wearing drawers. And he's like, like, what do you mean? And he's like, like boxer short, like drawers. <laughs> Um, there was a, a point about cooking and, you know, the <clears throat> cross examine the defense attorney was bringing out all of the lies in Meg's statement. And so then the, def the prosecution tried to get EJ in a line. He's like, oh, wasn't Meg cooking? And EJ like, yeah, Meg was cooking. And he's like, oh, wasn't she cooking nachos? And EJ's like, no, I remember tacos. And he's like, oh, are you sure it was taco night, are you? And like, oh my God, like, what are we talking about? It's another part. The prosecutor is like, oh, they were very drunk. Well, are they happy drunks or are they mean drunks? And EJ's like, well, what do you mean? They're <laughs> like, what does that mean? And then he, 
it really blew up in the prosecutor's face because EJ's like, well, they're party starters, they can be happy, but you know, Meg can, it can also go left, Meg can be very wild, she can be not herself, Kelsey can be like the Tasmanian devil, she can cuss you out, she can really start barking. And you know, if you ask me listening to that part, it was like, okay, yeah. Uh, ultimately, EJ made for entertaining witness, um, other than the fact that he established that Meg lied about things and is not being completely truthful about things like, you know, why she didn't want to leave, whatever. But he, the big thing that he established was that Kelsey packed her own bag, that he put the bag in the trunk. Why, during the time that they moved this car with the bag gone from the trunk to the middle seat? That sounds very interesting to me. That's a good point established by the defense. All right, subscriber only post. Here's the details that you're gonna like. All right, number one, they're still looking for the security guard. The prosecution said, judge, we're looking for him. We think we can get him. Give us another day. Meg's security guard still might testify. Number two, there is an issue with a juror. In the morning session, the prosecution raised to the judge that, hey, we've got an issue with a juror. We might not be able to have this person go forward, da 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 da. And then the judge, right before lunch, took that juror and the lawyers and they went to the back. I will tell you this about my opinion. I think the prosecution would love if that juror had an issue and can't continue. I think the defense will be very sad if that juror has an issue and can't continue. We will see what happens. Stay tuned.